Paul recognized that he was called by God to carry the gospel to non-Jewish people, to Gentiles. That was God's main calling on his life. But guess what? He also preached to Jewish people. As a matter of fact, when he would enter a town, his first strategy would be to go to the Jewish community first. He would go to the synagogue, and he would start sharing with them. And some of them came to know Jesus. Even though Paul would have told you, well, my, my primary calling is an apostle to the Gentiles. And yet he took the opportunities that he had. Peter, on the other hand, was called by God to carry the gospel to the Jews. But he also preached to Gentiles. As a matter of fact, in Acts chapter 10, we read the story of how God sent Peter, the apostle to the Jews, to a Gentile man, a non-Jewish man named Cornelius. And Peter went there and he preached to Cornelius and his entire household, and they wound up getting saved. So here you have, even though Peter's primary calling was to witness to Jewish people, he took the opportunities that were presented to him. The point is this. Paul and Peter chose to witness for Jesus regardless of their context. They made the most of every opportunity. We can't say, well, I'm not called to witness to that certain group of people. Or we can't say, well, I'm not called to witness, period. Every Christian is called to serve as a witness for Christ wherever he or she happens to be at any given time. We are ambassadors for the Lord Jesus Christ. We saw that in 2 Corinthians 5 in earlier sermons. It is simply who we are. We are all called to be witnesses regardless of what other callings we may have. Does that make sense? Every Christian is called to serve as a witness and an ambassador for our Lord Jesus. The Great Commission, that statement in Matthew 28 that we read earlier where Jesus said, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, we call that the Great Commission. The Great Commission teaches us that we should make disciples as we go. As we go. No matter how we may serve God in other ways, we are called to be witnesses for Jesus. We're called to tell others about Him as we go, as we go to school, as we go to work, as we go shopping, as we go on vacation, as we go to visit friends and family, as we go through life. We must live as witnesses, as ambassadors for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's just who we are. It's just who what we do. Uh, not too long ago, our congregation suffered a tremendous loss, and heaven received a great gain when our dear Lena Blanton went on to be with the Lord. I know that many of you remember Lena. She was a, I think that she became a member of Berea Baptist back when God was a boy. I mean, she had been a member here for forever. I think Lena was around, was it 96 when she died? 97. Lena was a tremendous blessing in my life. She would write me little notes of encouragement. She prayed for me every day. She had talked to me. She was just wonderful. And I loved her example. She served God in all sorts of ways. And she was real quiet about the way she did it. She did not like drawing attention to herself. And so, since she was so quiet about it, you may or may not know that Lena Blanton was an evangelist. She shared her faith. I remember one story that her family shared with me. Not long before Lena passed away, not too long after they received the test results and found that she was not going to live very much longer. The word about that kind of got around, and, and one day Lena walked out to her mailbox, and while she was there, one of her neighbors who had heard about Lena's condition came over and started sharing with her how Mrs. Blanton, I'm so sorry, and you know, this you're such a wonderful person, you've always been such a wonderful person to me, and that sort of thing. You know what Lena did? She started talking to him about the gospel. She told him about Jesus. Right there at the mailbox. He came over to console her. She's witnessing to him. Now that was not at all unusual. I can remember a few years, uh, several years ago at this point, 
Lena called me up and said, Pastor Kevin, would you be willing to come with me to visit a neighbor of mine who needs to know about Jesus? I said, absolutely. So I went over there and we walked a couple of yards down to her neighbor and we went in and sat down and we talked with this lady about the gospel. You need to understand, Lena did not call me because she was afraid to witness to this lady. She had been telling this lady about Jesus for years. But the lady hadn't responded. And so she figured, well, maybe if I bring Pastor Kevin in on it, maybe that'll get the job done. I wasn't there because Lena needed me. And yet, through this, I got to see the commitment that Lena had to sharing her faith. And she did it in such a humble, caring, kind, gentle way. Lena Blanton was an ambassador for the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter where she was. No matter what she was doing. So with that understanding, where was Lena's mission field? (laughs) It was wherever she happened to be. She was always Jesus' ambassador. We must all see ourselves as missionaries. Listen, everywhere we plant our feet is the mission field. Everywhere we plant our feet is the mission field because as followers of Jesus, we are always on mission. Last week, we heard the the testimony of Angela Godsey, among others. One of the things that Angela shared that I thought was so crucial was she talked about how when it came to witnessing in her workplace, she made a decision early on to just be herself. That was her witnessing strategy, to just be herself. What a novel concept. You see, the thing is, Angela is a follower of Jesus. That's who she is. So if she's just herself, that's going to come out in her actions and in her conversation. And it does. Lena Blanton was just being herself. And that's what came out. Earlier, I asked you to take the note sheet and take that first statement. Those I know who don't know Jesus yet. Remember that? And ask you to write down some names, or at least the initials of some names. Look at that list. Think about the names, the people on that list. That list, those names, that is the heart of your mission field. Now, your mission field is wherever you go. But the names on that list, that's the heart of your mission field. God has allowed your life to intersect with these people's lives for a purpose. And that purpose is so that they may be introduced to Jesus through you. That's why you're there. Introduced to Jesus through the way you care about them, through the way you serve them, through your attitudes, your actions, and your words. That's why you're there. Now, God may use other people to reach out to them too. You may not be the the only person God's using to work in that person's life, but God definitely wants to use you. Are we willing to go? We're going to finish the sermon this morning by looking at a passage in Luke chapter 5. Would you turn there, please, to the Gospel of Luke chapter 5. 